Today we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Wednesday, April 12, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. Chicago Bulls vs Toronto Raptors The Bulls have been tinkering with their starting lineup all season. Zach Lavin, Demer Derrison, Nikola Vucevic and Patrick Beverly have started every game they have played for Chicago this season, but the fifth spot has been up for grabs. The spot has been shared by Patrick Williams, Ao Tosunmu and Alex Caruso. As of late, the Bulls have been starting Caruso at shooting guard and sliding Derrison into the small ball power forward spot. The NBA season is long, but every game truly does matter, and that fact is highlighted this year by the Raptors' spot in the standings. The Raptors have the same 41-41 record as the Hawks, but they lost the tiebreaker because Atlanta beat them in two out of three games. Playing in the 9-10 game means they will have to win two straight games to make the first round, while if they were in the eighth spot, they would have two chances to win one game to advance. Pascal Siakam made his second All-Star game this season, averaging 24.2 ppg, 7.8 rpg, and 5.8 apg. Siakam only played in one game against the Bulls this season, putting up 20 points and 8 rebounds in the win in March. Fred Van Vliet is the next highest scorer on the team, he averages 19.3 ppg and leads the team with 7.2 apg from the point guard spot. Aga Nunabi led the league in steals with 1.9 per game, the athletic forward has steadily improved his offensive game and now averages 16.8 ppg. Scotty Barnes is another athlete with size on the wing, he averages 15.3 ppg. Jacob Polt and Chris Boucher split time at the center position, and Gary Trent Jr. is a shooter off the bench. The Bulls are a team built around the scoring ability of their two top wing players, Lavin and Darazin. The Raptors have elite wing defenders in Anunoby and Barnes. This is a tough matchup for the Bulls. The Raptors' length and quickness on the perimeter will cause problems for Chicago's best players. Siakam and Boucher are two more defenders with length that can take away easy shots at the rim when the guards drive. The Bulls also do not have an answer for Siakam. Chicago has been starting small lineups, but if they do this Darazin will have to guard Siakam in the post, which is a mismatch. When they go bigger, Patrick Williams will still have trouble stopping Siakam. The Raptors won the season series against Chicago and won the two matchups at home. The Bulls are going to struggle to score against the length of the Raptors, no matter what lineup Chicago goes with. Take the Raptors to win and cover. This is a low total for the modern NBA, even considering this is a playoff game. The Raptors have gone over the total in four of their last six, and all of the totals have been much higher than this line. In fact, this is the lowest total Toronto has seen since December 23rd, when they played Cleveland with a total of 214, and they went over that game as well. This is the lowest total Chicago has seen all season. I know it is set low for a reason, and the playoff referees will swallow their whistle, but there is far too much value on the over. The Bulls average 113.1 ppg, and the Raptors average 112.9, each team could go under their averages and still cover this line. Over is the play. Take the over 241. Oklahoma City Thunder vs New Orleans Pelicans. Oklahoma City closed the season with back-to-back -back wins to finish the season on a positive note as they dropped the Grizzlies in their regular season finale. The Thunder closed the year 40-42 and finished third in the Northwest Division, 13 games behind the Nuggets for the top spot. Against Memphis Oklahoma City trailed by four after the opening quarter and by two at the half before taking control of the game in the second half. The Thunder outscored the Grizzlies 38-24 in the third quarter to take a 12-point lead and didn't let Memphis closer than 10 in the final stanza. Oklahoma City shot an even 50% from the field, including 12 of 36 from three-point range, and won the rebounding battle 49-43. Jared Butler led the Thunder with 25 points in the win. This season, the Thunder are fifth in the league in scoring offense, as they average 117.5 points per game on the year. 
Oklahoma City is 14th in rebounding with 43.6 boards per contest, while they are 21st in assists with 24.4 dimes a night. The Thunder are 19th in the league in scoring defense, as they allow an average of 116.4 points a night. Shai Gilgis Alexander leads the team with 31.4 points, 4.8 rebounds and 5.5 assists per contest. Lugans Dort is the most reliable secondary scoring option, with 13.7 points per game. The Thunder look to get more production from Josh Giddy, 16.6 points, 7.9 rebounds, 6.2 assists, and 3-man, 7.7 points, are other secondary scoring options. Alexej Pokusevsky, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, Jalen Williams, 14.1 points, Dario Sarek, Kenrich Williams, Darius Bosley and Aaron Wiggins, have to be contributors if they hope to have success. Oklahoma City is 24th in the league in field goal percentage, as they shoot 46.5% from the floor as a team on the year. The Thunder are 15th by hitting 12.13s per game and 17th in three-point shooting by hitting 35.6% of their attempts from beyond the arc. New Orleans missed a chance to play in the 7-8s game against the Lakers as they let one slip away against the Timberwolves in their regular season finale. The Pelicans finished the regular season 42-40 and finished second in the Southwest Division, nine games behind the Grizzlies for the top spot. Against Minnesota, New Orleans led by 12 after one quarter, by 8 at the half, and by 14 in the third quarter before rallying. The Pelicans still were up one with 4.21 to play, before getting outscored 12-6 the rest of the way to take the loss. New Orleans shot 44.4% from the field, including a dismal 3 of 21 from three-point range, and turned the ball over 15 times in the loss. Brandon Ingram led the Pelicans with 42 points, 12 rebounds and 7 assists in the loss. On the season, the Pelicans are 15th in the league in scoring offense, as they average 114.4 points per game on the season. New Orleans is 13th in rebounding by collecting 43.7 boards a night, while the team ranks 11th in assists by dishing out 25.9 dimes a night. The Pelicans are 9th in the league in scoring defense, as they allow 112.5 points per game so far this year. Brandon Ingram puts up 24.7 points plus 5.5 boards per contest this season, while Zion Williamson adds a team-high 26 points plus 7 rebounds a night. New Orleans is 11th in field goal percentage by shooting 48% from the field as a team this season. The Pelicans are 23rd in the league in threes per game, as they knock down 11 triples per contest and stand 15th in three-point shooting by hitting 36.4% from beyond the arc. New Orleans struggled against Minnesota in their regular season finale, which pushed them down into this matchup where a loss could end their season. The Pelicans are without Williamson, which has been all too common since he was selected first overall a few seasons ago. With that said, New Orleans still has Ingram and McCollum to work with offensively, which is a plus. The Pelicans have what may be the most important thing in this game, which is home court advantage. New Orleans is 27-14 as the home team this season, while the Thunder went 16-25 as the visiting team this season. With the Thunder having issues on the defensive end of the floor all year, give the advantage to New Orleans in this contest. Our team pick is New Orleans Pelicans minus 5.5 points. The four meetings this season saw the undergo 3-1, with an average combined score of 217 points per game. That includes their sole game which went over, an overtime game that tallied 253 points. Remove that from the mix, and they've averaged a measly 205 points per game, nowhere near close to the total slapped on this one. New Orleans has scored less than 110 points in four of their last seven games. Oklahoma City has scored 115 or less in five of its last ten games. Both teams had their last two games go under, and four of their last six. Take the under 227.5 points.